you can see, it is a pretty chilly overcast day here in Cape Town, South Africa on this Friday, June 21st, 2024. I have only a couple days here left in Cape Town. Um, tomorrow is my last full day and then I leave Sunday evening. That means I head to Botswana next. So I thought I would take this chilly, cloudy, overcast day to kind of reflect on my experience here in Cape Town. One of the biggest questions I've gotten from friends and family while I've been here is, do I feel safe? The short answer is yes. That's the TLDR answer. Yes, I do feel safe. But that doesn't mean I have felt safe the entire time I've been here. That doesn't mean I've felt safe everywhere I've been. If I had to compare it to anywhere in the US, I would probably compare it to Baltimore in terms of how safe you feel, how pressing the uh, feeling like you need to kind of watch your back or look over your shoulder is. I would compare it to Baltimore, where there's a city where I spent, a, I've spent a lot of time in Baltimore. I'm from Maryland. In terms of street smarts and using common sense and not doing stupid things, Baltimore is a good example of an American city where if you take that to heart and you're, and you're sure to practice that, then you'll probably be okay. I did some moderate research before I came here just to kind of figure out the best areas to stay in the city. I ended up staying in Seapoint and all in all, I think that was a good decision. Seapoint is close to the promenade, which a lot of people in Cape Town consider probably one of the better areas of the city. I think Camps Bay is probably what they would consider the most bougie, but Camps Bay is it's much further that way. It was too far from the city. Ultimately, I decided I didn't want to stay in Camps Bay because I wanted to be closer to the city in order to explore it. And in the end, I think that was a good decision. I could see myself like being in Camps Bay and never really having seen downtown Cape Town, never really seeing the city center, never finding that restaurant where I ate babuti, never finding that market that was on top of a building. Had I stayed in Camps Bay, likely the only thing I would have seen would have been Camps Bay. The other area that I was considering before I came here was the waterfront. I'm glad I didn't stay on the waterfront because I feel like the waterfront was probably, or is probably, super touristy. Just a lot of foreigners. They're not really interacting with any South Africans. Seapoint was a good decision because it had since a grocery store, restaurants. That's pretty much all I need. I stayed right on Regent Road. The Airbnb I have overlooks the ocean. It's quite beautiful. I went a little all out, I guess you could say, with uh, the Airbnb on this trip. And it paid off because I ended up staying in, a, in a, an ultimately gorgeous and beautiful apartment in what is a, uh, seems like a very nice part of the city. If you watch this channel, you know that I'm not very big on touristy things. But if you are, I think Seapoint is probably still a good option. And I know that might be contradictory to what I just said about how the reason I didn't stay in Waterfront is because I wanted to stay away from the tourists. It's true, it is a little bit of a contradiction. But in terms of what's more touristy, I would say the Waterfront is more touristy for sure. Cape Town and I think South Africa in general definitely has a reputation of being somewhat of a dangerous country. But like I said, I, I, I don't think it's any worse 
than some of the cities in the United States. Mind you, I've only seen Cape Town. So my experience is based completely on Cape Town. But based on that experience, it's not that bad. It's not bad. I mean, here I am right now holding a, a relatively expensive camera, walking along the promenade, talking, and I, I don't feel, I feel safe. I don't feel particularly unsafe. Having said that though, there are a few times where I felt, maybe not unsafe, but I felt a little more alert. And I was mostly down in the city center, mostly down around, uh, what is it called? Allegheny Street, Allegheny Street, I can't remember, something like that. But down by the castle, down by the, where I got my tattoo, and those areas, you just gotta stay alert, keep your eyes open, and don't do anything stupid, like have a camera. In that case, you're just asking for trouble, right? Right? Now, I'm not claiming that now that I've spent almost two weeks here in South Africa, that I am some South African expert, because I certainly am by no means no such thing. But, but, but in two weeks, you do learn a little bit about the place you're staying. You learn a little bit, like, like Johannesburg, the locals call it Joburg. They don't call it Johannesburg, sometimes Jburg, but mostly I've heard Joburg here. You learn things like South Africa has 11 or 12, depending on who you ask, official languages. One of which is Kosa, 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 Kosa. It's the Kosa which I think is so cool because the person I was speaking to that was telling me the language Kosa, 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 effortlessly. Of course, it was her first language. Effortlessly, just Kosa, Kosa. I, I struggle, Kosa. But you also kind of learn like, oh, okay. Don't go to lower Woodstock. Go to upper Woodstock. That's the artsy area. I ended up avoiding Woodstock altogether. Everything I read, I don't know, I didn't go. I did other things. I saw the penguins. I went to the top of Table Mountain. That's cool. I don't need to see Woodstock. So any, specifically talking to, to my people, the Americans, any Americans that are thinking about coming to South Africa, but they're reserved because of the reputation that it kind of has in the States, I encourage you to come here to Cape Town. I, like I said, I can only base my experience off of Cape Town, but I would encourage you to come here to Cape Town as kind of a stepping stone into the rest of the country. Like having been here in Cape Town, I have more confidence where I think I could probably go to Durban and be okay. I could probably go to East London, maybe even Joburg, I don't know. Maybe that's a naive opinion. Maybe it is, I don't know. But I feel like Cape Town is a good first step into South Africa. And as long as you use your wits and you don't act stupid like a tourist flashing jewelry and or as long as you're not disrespectful to anybody and don't go out at night I mean, if you do take an Uber home, that's what I did. But as long as you do those things, I think you'll probably be okay. So if I was gonna do this trip over again, what, what would I change? What things would I, whoa! Oh, I probably wouldn't slip and fall. But what would I do differently? What things would I have done? I think I probably wouldn't have uh, hired a somewhat sultry driver that took me down to uh, Cape Point or that park down there, the Cape, Cape National Park, or I, I forget what it is. I, I probably either would have just rented a car or um, maybe gone with a different driver <laughs> because I felt a little rushed when I was at Cape Point 
And um, though I did get to see the Cape of Good Hope, I did get the pictures and the videos, and I got to see penguins on the way back, I, I, I would have liked to have uh, not felt rushed. Probably another thing that I uh, would have done differently is not get as much cash as I did. I ended up really not needing it. Pretty much everywhere here in Cape Town is tap and go. I mean, I didn't even really need my credit card, my physical credit card. I think I needed it a couple of times, but I would say 80% of the time, I was able to pay just with my phone, just tapping my phone and just pay and go. In some countries, in some developing nations, um, like Bolivia, for example, it's not the case. You can maybe tap and go maybe 50% of the places in Bolivia. Or in India is another example where you could maybe tap and go maybe 70, 60, 70% of the places. Here in South Africa, or specifically in Cape Town, it's like 80, 90%. I mean, pretty much everywhere. Well, no, I should say pretty much 95% of the places I could pay with a credit card. 80% of the places I could pay with just my phone. There was maybe one place that was cash only, and that was the tattoo shop. So Cape Electric Tattoo, do better. I keep thinking the rain's gonna come in. And when the rain comes in, I'm gonna put the, whoa, look at that. Can you see that back there? Whoa. Yeah, oh, somebody's calling me. For the most part, the people here are extremely friendly. Mostly, mostly. My driver not included. Not you, Greg. Greg, you're awesome. I'm talking about you, Joseph. You know who you are. I didn't run into many rude or like unfriendly people. I pretty much everybody I've spoken to and has been completely polite. And most people, they are fully willing to just talk to you and help you. It seems like, I think the people here in South Africa are extremely friendly. And from what I've been told is that the people in Botswana are even friendlier. And I go to Botswana the day after tomorrow. So I'm hoping to uh, find that out. It was a lovely day. There is a fair amount of poverty here in Cape Town. And I think that's not a surprise. That shouldn't be a surprise for anybody. But again, it's not any more prevalent than you would see in like a, an American city like Baltimore. I think if you can survive Baltimore, then you can survive Cape Town. I think that's fair. The sea looks angry today. That is for sure. And I see over here a bunch of places where the waves have kind of crashed into the wall. Or the, the quai. Is this a quai? Where they've cr crashed into the quai and have splashed over the side. So we'll be walking on this little path right here. Mostly, I've talked to more people on this trip than I normally do. Though a lot of it hasn't been on uh, camera because that's another tricky thing about being here. And actually, just about anywhere, really. Like people, you walk around, you're holding this, key, this camera, and people, they see the camera, obviously, right? They're not blind, people see the camera. And I think some people are wary of it, or they're just kind of wondering what you're doing. You gotta balance the idea of respect with trying to get your YouTube video. You gotta respect people's privacy. And though I know, you know, well, they're in public. Well, I don't know about South African law, but if it's like American law, well, you're in public. There's no right to privacy. Yes, technically true. But that doesn't mean you can't be respectful for people's privacy anyway. And that is one thing that I've noticed very much here is trying to be respectful of people's privacy. It's, it, I don't know how to explain it without sounding like a jerk. And I feel, I feel like I've been such a jerk in these videos here. I, I don't know why. I just feel like, like everything I'm saying is either pretentious 
or arrogant or conceited or all of the above. And I don't mean it that way. I really don't. I just, I just kind of speak in my mind for whatever reason. No, no, that's not true. Because I'm thinking like, well, of the places I've been to recently, like where was I more conscious of not filming people in public? And I think probably in India and here in South Africa, I was very conscious of that. Unlike Finland, where's the whatever. I just realized that I have been to two BRICS nations now. That would be India and South Africa. And I, if my plan holds, I should be going to a third in a couple of weeks when I um, go from South Africa to Brazil and then from Brazil to Bolivia. So that will be the, the B, the I, and the S. So I've been to BIS. I, I wouldn't mind going to Russia, but I have absolutely no desire to go to China. None whatsoever. No desire to go to China. I don't even want to go to China on a layover, like a stopover. I, I, I have zero desire to go to China. I mean, just the fact that I'm speaking this probably puts me on some list. So that if I tried to go into the country, they pull me aside and be like, so you have from some very strong opinions about China and the Chinese government. And I'd say, uh, 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 yeah, no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to put up with that. I just, I would just, I have, nope, that's fine. I can go around China I'll go to Mongolia. I'll even go to Russia. I go to Thailand, the countries around China, China itself. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. There's a library up here and it looks open. So I want to check out the library. All right. It is interesting talking to people about politics here and specifically South African politics. They had an election a couple of weeks ago. So maybe two or three weeks before I arrived at this point. And people here in Cape Town I have very, very strong feelings, but I guess politics is something that evokes very, very strong feelings in most people. The Library Bibliothèque. This may be where we kind of hang our U-turn and start walking back towards home. I'm not exactly sure how far down we are, but one nice thing about Sea Point it's kind of hard to get lost because it's just like one main road. All right, here we go. I think we can get in. So the signs are interesting because you have English on the top and then below that is Afrikaans. And then below that, I believe is Zulu. It's pretty neat. I guess it would be a bit much to require all 11 languages on the public signs. Hello. Just looking around. Okay. Okay. I like folks in other languages. Okay. 
I see a lot of them official languages here in South Africa. I know we seem to have English and Afrikaans. Surely there's like Zulu or Kosa. This is how you have to see my design. I wish I could find books in Kosa. Kosa. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. You too. See what I do, how I risk myself. Going undercover inside the library, bringing you the hard-hitting journalism from inside the library. Oh my God, the, this is gonna go viral. This is the this is the other chain of pharmacies. And I was thinking of checking out for sleep aids. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to find Zequil here. And by here, I don't mean this pharmacy. I mean South Africa in general, honestly. Probably Africa in general. Yeah. Nope. Sunshine food, vegan snacks. Yeah, keep walking. Keep walking. So I'm still in Seaside. Sea Point. I think I might have called it Seaside a few times. I'm still in Sea Point. And I don't know how far I am from home. I'm just gonna walk home. I wanna find something to eat because your boy's hungry here. I haven't really had anything to eat. If you can tell, I'm a little more reserved about recording right now because it's a, it's a busy street. People look at you. I think the best way to stay safe is just to kind of blend in and not stand out. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm holding a camera and it looks like I'm talking to myself. Looking at the noodles. This guy's interested in me. Okay, keep walking. Empire Asian restaurants. Is it a buffet? No, it's not a buffet. Alright, this guy's. Let's see. Medical cannabis store. Ooh, stay away from that. Yeah, stay away from the weed here. I had two gummies and they knocked me on my butt. All right. I was, uh, Pretty sure I was being followed for a couple of blocks. I think I stand out as a tourist. Again, I have a fanny pack camera talking to myself. So, again, keeping your wits. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe it was all in my head. That's fair. Guy's back. He showed up again. All right. 
He's going the other way now. Again, Baltimore. Many years ago, I went to Ireland for like almost two months. It was a work trip back when I worked at America Online. And they sent me to Ireland for two months. And I had a rental car. And now Ireland, they drive on the left-hand side of the road. And I've thought about that trip a lot here in South Africa because of how they drive on the left-hand side with, this, with, the, with the driver's seat on the right-hand side. Now, mind you, they did the same thing in India. So it's not like this is the first time since Ireland that I've seen that. But this is probably the first place where I contemplated renting a car because you couldn't pay me to rent a car in India. No, 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 no. There's a place called Bandits and Burgers. I mean, that could be something. The problem I'm having though, is I know that we're gonna pass a McDonald's. I am the worst traveler in the world. Seriously, I'm the worst traveler in the world. Ah. Burgers and Bandits? Maybe? No, we're gonna keep walking. This place called The Deli. And then of course over here is a place called Adult World. Do I wanna eat at Adult World? One thing I'm struggling with here is to find African food or South African food. I mean, I had the baboti, which was a South African dish, but I haven't had anything else. But everything is either either Middle Eastern pizza or burgers. That's it. Oh, and Asian food. I don't see any restaurants that say like South African food or African food. So. You know, if you ask me how the food is, I don't have a lot to judge on, especially the South African dishes. I have the babodi, which I had in one place, which honestly, it was kind of flavorless. It was all right. And that's it. That's all I've had as far as South African food. Everything else has been standard fare. And of course, McDonald's, which I have a feeling that's probably, I'm hungry. And if I pass the McDonald's, which I know at some point I do, and I think I see it, that's probably where I'm going to eat, sadly enough. No, 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 no. I'm not going to eat there. I, I probably will. I might. I might. I can always go out to dinner, which I kind of wanted to do anyway. I don't know. I'm probably going to eat at McDonald's, aren't I? So I just saw a bus going to the street that I was mentioning earlier where I was like, Allegheny, I think I called it. It's Adderley, Adderley Street. I don't remember what I was saying about it, but I remember I was talking about it and I just wanted to correct myself and say it's Adderley Street. A-D-D-E-R-L-Y, Adderley, like Adderall. Or like Addy, Adderley, Adderley. Like if you're acting like me, you're probably being Adderley. What did I tell you? McDonald's. The old standby. God damn this camera. McDonald's. All right, let's do it. I swear that I, I do eat things other than McDonald's. It's just sometimes when you're in new places and you're hungry, you just want something that's going to hit home, right? You want something that's going to like, you're going to eat and it's really going to get the job done and you know it's going to get the job done. And for me, it's McDonald's. I mean, I got a Big Mac meal with the, uh, the ketchup with the Arab writing that I think is pretty cool. And um, that's, it, it's going to satisfy me. It's going to, it's going to make me so I'm not hungry. But for now, I'm going to enjoy my lunch.
I spared taping eating McDonald's because, you know, you see it once in a new city. How many times do you really need to see it? We're good with that. We're fine with that. I'm just gonna walk home now. I don't know that there's a lot more to say at this point. Sunday, as I've mentioned, I head to Habron, the capital of Botswana. I like this day. Cloudy, chilly. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna sit on the couch, I'm gonna open up the doors and cover myself in a blanket. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna be spoiled because I am a spoiled boy. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care.